What's up guys? It's Justin again. Uh, it's been a little while, but we're coming back at you with a new painting video. Uh, today we're going to be painting some Kazarkins. Uh, so this is what my Kazarkins team looks like. Um, I've painted all the models for the most part. Uh, with the exception of uh, the leader. I saved the leader for you guys. So I just want to show them off real quick. Um, give a little backstory on this. Uh, when the Kazarkins got announced, I was very, very excited because as somebody who jumped into Warhammer a little bit late, um, I saw in a couple Facebook groups, I'm in a couple uh, trade groups on Facebook, um, I saw some people post the metal ones uh, maybe about a year ago. Uh, for sale, and I really wanted to buy them. And uh, when they got announced for Kill Team, I was like, yeah, these look fantastic. So uh, I knew this was going to be a really fun paint project for me. So uh, I struggled when they got announced uh, to come up with a color scheme, especially with the short window between them being announced and released. Um, but this is what I landed on. Uh, so yet again, Facebook, uh, scrolling through Facebook, uh, I got an ad for these really funky camo shirts uh, and they were in this kind of colorway so I grabbed a couple pictures off the website and that's how I painted my Kazakhans. I thought they'd be kind of fun to do in this weird vibrant bright um, kind of camo scheme. Uh, so what I have is basically the entire roster built. Um, now I, don't, I know that it doesn't look like that from here um, but what we've got I think this is my regular trooper I haven't played these guys in a while. Uh, this is my medic. Here's my mine layer. My comms. And uh, I can't remember what this guy is. Vox. He's got like a Vox thing. Uh, what the hell? What is it called? I don't know. But And then you have six total gunner options and your leader with some options. Uh, so what I've got here is, this is my melta gun gunner, um, and I have alternate weapons uh, magnetized. So say I'm playing Into the Dark. This is, this is pretty much how I play my Into the Dark list. Or no, this is open board. Somebody else played this uh, recently. So I don't think I'd run maybe the melta gun on open board, so swap that out. And uh, go ahead and uh, plug these guys in. That's not right. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Why did I give him a gun or a grenade? But, yeah. And then all this lines up the way it's supposed to. Boom. And now I have the Hot Shot Volley Gun. Um, I've even gone as far. This was a pain in the butt to figure out. But I went ahead and magnetized my sniper as well. Uh, so how I did that was uh, I magnetized the backpack. I hope this magnet doesn't break, but okay, cool, we're good. Uh, the magnet popped off this, so I had to re-glue it. So I've got a magnet for the backpack into the middle of the back, and then I've got a magnet kind of floating here. I need to put something behind that to just reinforce it. And then I've gone ahead and I put another magnet here and then a magnet in this arm. So what I can do is I can pop this guy on like that, pop that on like that, Give it a little squeeze. Now, the only real sacrifice I had to make was with this. I could have very easily fixed this by um, putting, like, a piece of plastic in here, making, like, a shim, and then, like, sanding it down. But I thought this looked fine. It's, it's acceptable. It's a nice, happy medium. But all these guys are magnetized in a way that if I don't want to run a sniper for whatever reason, I can grab the flamer. Um, and most of these, I think there's like one or two cases where the, the, um, the angle of the arm and the way the torso is doesn't quite line up, but for the most part, you can swap any operative, give them whatever loadouts, like his hand doesn't touch on this particular torso, but you know, it works. It, it all works. So, um, so now that all that is out of the way, I'm going to show you guys how I painted them. Uh, more specifically, or most specifically, the camo. Now the, the big problem here that I'm having, and I just kind of noticed this just a second ago, um, is I need to remember what my light blue color is. But painting camo is surprisingly not that difficult. 
So we've got our leader here. Uh, he's also magnetized, so I can take either option. I can either do the uh, the hot shot gun with the power weapon or the chain sword and the plasma pistol, which I think most people would probably just run this because uh, everybody loves plasma. Pair that with the uh, elite mechanism with the team, and you've kind of got some wind sauce here. So uh, let me set up my palette real quick, and we'll go ahead and get started. All right, so I've already showed you that all my dudes are magnetized. So we're gonna go ahead and just pop off the arms real quick, just so I can show off what we're doing here, how we're painting this camo. Um, so uh, painting camo is one of those things that I think a lot of people shy away from because uh, camo looks super complicated, but it's one of those things where until, it, it kind of looks bad until it's done. Um, so what I've done is I've base coated this guy in Cantor Blue. Uh, you don't have to use Cantor Blue if you're following this exact uh, tutorial. Just find a nice deep dark blue that you like. So something that's kind of navy. Uh, next, I have Vallejo Sky Blue. Uh, so any light blue will do. We're going to go ahead and grab some of that off the palette. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just paint the cloth sections. So I'm going to grab like this corner here, and I'm basically just going to make a bunch of blobs that move horizontally. Um, so what I mean by that is like here, we're just going to grab a little section in the middle of this. We don't want to make vertical lines. We want to make our lines look like they're horizontal. That's basically what I mean by that. And then mix them up a little bit, make little like cloud patterns. This is like a really, uh, fun way to paint like elementary school clouds. Um, but don't think too much about it. Try and keep it a little bit random. Um, don't like just trace the whole bottom or whatever. Uh, just make splotches of color. And try not to make your patterns too much the same. Don't forget the pants. So like grab one of these folds here, grab like a bottom fold. Do like something like that where you kind of come back in on itself. Now, uh, for me, it doesn't matter too much if I get it, like if I was doing this section I got on the armor, I'd have to go back and paint Cantor Blue, so you want to be careful here. But like on the pants, I'm going to be painting the outside of the knee guard in black, and that's after this, like way after this, so that doesn't matter. Just make sure that you're tidy where you need to be tidy. You, you'll, you know, figure out what colors you want and all that. I think this technique is going to lend itself pretty well to being mixed with other color schemes and doing other things with it. Um, it's just a matter of figuring out how you want to paint your camo. So that's pretty good. I think I can live with that. Uh, let me do one little bit like right, right up here just to kind of tie that section together. All right. So now, we're going to come in, and we're going to use Screamer Pink. So, same type of deal. We're just going to basically do the exact same thing, but don't be afraid to overlap. So, like for this first one here, I'm going to start in the blue, and I'm just going to pull it out. And I'm basically going to do the same thing, but I don't want my blobs to be quite as big. You want some blobs to be like little, basically almost dots. And they don't all have to overlap. You can put like a, a, a pink spot down here in the dark blue. Now it's not going to be as vibrant, and uh, that's okay. You just give it another layer, let it dry, give it another layer. Um, you know, mix it up a little bit. Just kind of keep following this pattern. We'll come back when I'm done. Okay, so now that all of our colors are down... Um, what we need to do now is incorporate our last bit, and that's the black. Uh, so in the reference image, the black is kind of a thin layer, and it kind of covers not a lot of the previous stuff, but it does cover a pretty good bit. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start like midway through here, and I'm just going to make like a little Y pattern, and that's going to come off to the edge of here, and it's just going to stop. 
um, up here. We're just going to kind of bring it around. Uh, we still want to keep that horizontal kind of feel to everything we're doing. And we want to make sure that we don't cover everything. So kind of move between your colors. This is a really good spot to show this off of me. Zoom in a little bit. Um, I want to keep this navy. I want to keep, you know, all these other colors. So I'm going to start up here. And I'm going to kind of pull it down and, and kind of trace that shape a little bit. But then I'm also going to kind of come over here and make like just that little bit of extra uh, blue there. And I'm going to bring this up and under here. And then kind of like the pattern goes down and under, but it continues here. You know, you got to think beyond what's on the mini a little bit uh, in some cases just to make sure that your patterns look, you know, I guess believable. Uh, another thing you can do is like these both swoop this way, so this one is going to swoop the other way. And we're just going to kind of cut through everything. Kind of like that. Um, other things you can do is like in the smaller areas, just put put like a little line or just a couple dots just to kind of signify that the black is there. And remember, we're not cutting all of this out. We just want to put the black there so that it's that fourth color. Uh, now, I think that this is the least important color, mostly because, well, partly because you can't see it as well um, against the navy, but it's there when you, like, look really hard at it. So uh, I'm going to finish this up. Uh, I don't have too much left on this particular piece, but I do have the arms left. So I'll be right back. All right, so while I was doing the black lining, I went ahead and painted some black details. Uh, this is just something I like to do to speed things up a little bit. When I painted the pink, I painted the coils to the plasma gun. When I painted the black, I painted the casing to the gun and the sword. Uh, but if you don't do that, that's fine. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and use this opportunity to do that step now. Uh, so for all my other guys, I went ahead and painted all the pouches, the belts, all that stuff black. Just any like extra details are just black. Um, so go ahead and take care of that, and we will be back when that's done. Alright, so the next thing we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and zoom in here. We're going to start painting the face. Um, so fortunately these models don't have a ton of exposed skin, so uh, a couple drops of paint will go a long way. But what we're going to do here is we're just going to go ahead and base coat the entire face. Uh, this is Bugman's Glow. Uh, I just found this the other day. I've had it for a long time. So deviating slightly from my normal uh, how I paint skin, uh, taking it to a little bit more of a traditional GW standard for this part, a little bit, because um, this is a really nice base color for flesh. Uh, make sure you don't forget his chin. there we go we don't want to clog up any of those details and the reason we're doing this now instead of later is uh, we still haven't done anything we're probably not I mean we're not gonna do a whole lot with the extra armor but I do want to make sure that we do it before we start detailing anything so that it's easier to go back and fix um, so while that's drying we can start picking out some of these details so for these little lights uh, I go ahead and paint these Screamer pink. I'm trying to stay like really close to my palette here. Um, one of the things here is uh, I don't want a whole lot of extra details to um, kind of pull away from my color scheme, I guess. So I'm staying very close to these original colors in the palette so that the camo can speak for the color scheme itself. Uh, this is going to be a lot less of what I normally do, where I do a lot of weathering and stuff like that. Um, I want these guys to look and be just very clean. So we're going to go ahead and give these plasma coils another coat of pink while we're waiting. Just to go ahead and kind of start uh, that process a little bit. Um, but yeah, that looks pretty good. I think I'm going to give this one more layer and then we'll come back and we'll do the next one. Alright guys, so um, I went ahead and did 
the wash on the face uh, just because I didn't think uh, it was worth starting and stopping the video for three seconds to show you that I applied a wash to the face. Uh, so next I'm going to go ahead and take uh, some army painter wherever I put it. There it is. Uh, Barbarian flesh. And we're just going to thin this down and we're going to put kind of a uh, soft layer on our highlights. So uh, what that means is like the nose. I know everybody talks about this in all their videos. Uh, the cheeks. The chin. I'm going to grab like his lower jaw down here. And this looks really intense right now, but it will kind of calm down a little bit when it's dried. And then these lines down by the side of his face. Kind of give him the Hulk Hogan thing a little bit. There we go. But don't worry, we're not done. There's, uh, there's going to be more of this. This looks terrible. <laughs> Oh, man. Maybe if we throw a little more on him. Woo! That's rough. Alright, so we're going to let that dry, and hopefully that evens out just a teeny little bit. I'm also going to throw some black here in his, like, actual eyelids. Oh god, I've messed everything up. Kind of, not really, but kind of. All right, I'll be back. All righty, so it uh, doesn't look too too bad it's a little it's a little rough but we're gonna try and tidy it up a little bit so we're gonna take our next highlight we're gonna take that previous flesh tone we're just gonna mix in a little bit of mummy's robes and I'm really just gonna grab the most extreme highlights so the nose the cheekbones maybe maybe it yeah, will grab the chin and that's it I, that's all I'm that's all I'm messing with um, now on the side, I've gone ahead, I've taken a little bit of Mummy's robes, and we've thinned it down a little bit. And we're going to go ahead and paint the eyes real quick, hopefully. This is really hard to do on camera. Well, let's, yeah, that'll work. Not what I was going for, but let's see if we can get this on a little better. We can always go back and tidy up. I've done worse. Uh, we're also going to grab his teeth. Now that, <laughs> that looks rough, but we're going to fix that too. So once that dries, we're going to go ahead and, and pop in uh, probably a sepia wash. Uh, for the eyes, uh, I'll probably just go back and forth with them a little bit until I until I get them how I like them, but that's basically how I paint my eyes and my faces. Um, now, we are going to do a couple other little things here. Now, this is where we're going to deviate from the whole uh, staying on the palette business. So what I'm going to do, if I can find it real quick, uh, I'm going to grab some Incubi Darkness. We're just going to put the teeniest, teeniest, teeniest little bit on the palette. And we're going to thin that out a bunch. Like you want almost nothing. Uh, now if that's too green for you, you can throw a touch of black in it just to kind of darken it down a little bit. Uh, you could pro probably make better use of like Corvus Black here now that I'm thinking about it. But this is the first color that jumped out to me, so... This is what we're going to use. Um, so the idea here is we're going to use a really, 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 really thin wash, uh, or glaze rather, and like just like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of give him uh, a little bit of a 
like kind of five o'clock shadow thing going on here. We're just going to drag that to the bottom of his face. That's actually kind of strong. Now, if that's too strong for you, what you can do is you can take and mix your flesh tone into that a little bit, and it'll kind of soften it up for you. So again, something kind of like that blends a little bit better into the skin. Let's go ahead and throw that in there. Yeah, that looks much better. Uh, another thing we can do is we can... Um, we can do like purples or reds around his eyes. So uh, I think the Screamer Pink might work decently well for this just to kind of create that impression that like, you know, he's been at it for a while. Mix a little bit of the Cantor Blue in there. There we go, it's a pretty good purple. A little bit more of that Screamer Pink. And again, we're looking for not quite like that, maybe a little thinner, there we go. And we're just gonna put that under his eyes, just on that cheekbone there. Just gonna pop that in there like that. You can also grab his nose if you wanna do that. Uh, and then another thing I like to do is I'll take my Screamer Pink, I'll mix a really good amount of flesh tone into it, just enough that uh, it dark, or it, it kinda pulls that flesh tone towards the red a little bit. Um, and I will paint the bottom lip using this. So just real carefully grab that bottom lip. And that will help kind of define the face a little bit. And that actually makes the mouth look so much better. Just like that. Alright, so I'm going to do the uh, the sepia wash off camera because I have to find my sepia wash. Uh, but we'll be back and we'll work on the next little bit. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do, and this is sort of an optional step, I'm just going to take that black mix that I thinned down earlier. Um, and I'm just going to line out my armor just to give it a little bit of definition. You can just, just as easily just go ahead and throw Agrax Earth Shade over this. Uh, but just some real subtle lining just to kind of help some of the details pop a little bit create some separation between some of the materials stuff like that uh, you don't have to go super crazy here uh, I'm just putting it basically where armor panels meet on rivets stuff like that alright so before we move on to any kind of final detailing uh, I went ahead I painted the last couple details on the helmet that I missed uh, so just a little bit of a white or an off-white for the cards uh, red band for me anyway for the uh, the band that's holding it down um, but if you don't think that this is bright enough what I'm gonna recommend is go ahead grab some fluorescent paints and paint them over some of your other colors so like I'm gonna grab some fluorescent pink and I'm going to paint that over the pink camo, the, the Screamer pink, just a little bit. It should brighten it up a little bit, give you a little bit more pop. Now, um, if you're watching this video and not following along on your first watch of the video, uh, I'm going to recommend maybe doing this as you paint those colors. So paint in your red or your pink or whatever and then paint in your fluorescent. I'm also painfully aware that this kind of goes against uh, the point of camouflage. I know that camouflage is meant to make you blend in and, uh, you know, have you, help you hide from your surroundings and stuff like that. Uh, but this is also a tiny toy soldier in a fake fictional universe, and uh, I want this pink to, to jump off the mini. Uh, now, the unfortunate thing here is I haven't done this to my other minis, which means now I have to go back and do this on my other minis. Uh, but for you, watching in the future, you will have the foresight to do this now. Uh, now, that's the pink. 
Um, if I also want to, I can make that blue pop out with some fluorescent blue as well, or I can just use a brighter blue. Um, I think I'm going to go for the fluorescent just because it's here. I also think that this is going to be one of those situations where when this guy is under a black light, he's going to look really interesting and very cool, very unique. Um... So let's pop that on, and then let's uh, let's put that to the test real quick. So let me well, clean my brush off, and and of course my uh, my black light doesn't really like reach over here. Uh, but yeah, he does basically what I thought he would do. Um, you know, he's he's definitely glowing. Look at that. So, to me, that's very, uh, very cool, very thematic, uh, with the whole, uh, into the dark thing. So, uh, the last little bit that we have to do, and this is the, the final detail, kind of, I mean, you, you've got to put a wash on it, but, um, I'm going to take some exhaust manifold from Vallejo Metal Color. You only need a couple drops of this. This stuff goes a long way. It's been a little bit since I've used it it seems um, but this is one of my favorite colors um, this is a lot like uh, to me anyway it reminds me of um, Alclad Steel which when I was doing Gundam models was one of my favorite colors to airbrush with uh, especially when I was doing any kind of like metallic details uh, so all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna pick out whatever metal details I want. So like the belt buckle here, the eagle on the chest. Ooh, my brush is split and that's not good. Uh, this little light thing. Uh, the power packs on the backpack as well as the plugs. And then any like minus mold detail that's sticking out. Anything that that just says, hey, paint me, just grab that with this with this dark silver color um, now you don't have to go too crazy you know uh, a little bit can go a long way but there we go so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and finish all these details we're gonna slap them together and I'll show you what he looks like before we paint the last little bit of his plasma all right, so we've got our fluorescent pink down. Now, there's a lot of ways we can handle moving forward on uh, the plasma. I think we're gonna kinda use a, a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. Um, so what I wanna do is I wanna take a white or an off-white, where did I put it? and I'm gonna mix that into my Screamer Pink. So I'm gonna start with that white. I'm gonna grab some Screamer Pink. And I'm gonna kinda of pull this over here on my palette. And then I'm gonna pull this off white over here and we're gonna mix them in the middle. Um, and I don't need like a, a smooth transition here, but I do want, um, here, let me shoot this out so you can actually kind of see what I'm doing here. Um, I want clear steps. So this is like, I, I wouldn't say a 50-50, but we're somewhere in the ballpark. And then grab some of that, grab some of that, and then get us a little closer to that pure off-white. That'll work. Okay. Now, I'm going to glaze these in. So we're going to thin these out a lot. And if you don't want to stick in the same color family, you can like mix in, like I've got Emperor's Children here, you can mix some of that in and uh, try and get that to work with you. And what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to paint this down like the side of the gun. And I'm going to try and make this work as much like a wash as possible. 
So we want that just on the side and the bottom, on both sides of the gun. So something like that. Uh, I'm going to hit this with a hair dryer, get it to dry real quick, and we'll be right back. All right, I know this next part's going to be a shocker, but we're going to do the same thing with that uh, next step to white. We're going to thin that down to a wash. Between a wash and a glaze is fine. It'll work the same way in this case, I think. And we're going to drag it along the bottom, and we're going to try not to go more than like halfway up the side. Something like that should work. All right, so I, uh, we're gonna take that almost pure white and we're literally, we're just gonna trace the bottom. We're just gonna wash the bottom here. And then here, I'm, I forgot to, oh geez. I forgot to say before, uh, I'm painting the vents as well. So this progressively is gonna, it's gonna start one color and it's gonna work its way back. Uh, and I put my highlights towards the back end of the gun because that's where the core of the gun is going to be. So, all right, we'll let that dry. All right, so we're almost done. We've just got a couple little steps left to do, um, and this first one is going to be we're going to throw that ma that uh, fluorescent magenta or that fluorescent pink over top of this plasma gun. So I'm going to use a little bit larger brush here. I want to make sure I don't got too, too much paint, and I want to cover the whole thing. But you especially want to make sure you get the bottom. Because it's going to sit much nicer over those bright colors than it is going to be over the dark colors. So that's going to work to your advantage. Same thing with the vents. They're going to pretty much work the same way I think I'm going to switch to a smaller brush for the rest of this I think it worked a little bit better for me there we go, something like that <clears throat> now, while we're waiting for this to dry, uh, one thing we can do is we can work on our glow effect. Because, like, yeah, this looks bright, uh, and it still it still needs work. Don't you know? Don't count it as finished. Uh, but we want to take that screamer pink. We want to thin that down to a nice glaze, like a real thin glaze. There we go. Um, and we're going to basically glaze this around the casing to the gun. This might take two or three glazes to get it up to what you want it to be. But you really just want to do just around the casing of the gun. Uh, now you can also do like a little glaze around the front as well. Um, it's not going to hurt you for sure, but what this is going to do is kind of stain the surrounding area pink a little bit, and it's not going to be as bright as what's in the gun, so it will help you sell the effect that it is glowing. There we go. Sometimes you got to kind of encourage it a little bit. But we're not done, because I think... That fluorescent should be dry now. We applied it pretty thin. We're going to go back to that pure white. We're going to give that one more little line down here at the bottom. Of that, just the, like I said, the pure white. We want it real thin. Almost a wash. Because anything that's glowing needs a light point. And the brightest color you can make it is white. So that kind of pushes that 
effect to the next level. You can also redot these um, these little sections that are um, on the front. Just give those a little. Oh, that might be a little too much. Go. Wipe that excess. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, if you want, you can kind of back and forth a little bit here from this point. Uh, the last thing I have that I'm going to suggest doing, and we don't have to even pause for this because I think everything's pretty dry now. We're going to take an old kind of janky brush, something you don't care too much about. We're going to get some black on there. We're going to take a paper towel. And we're going to get most of it off kind of like a dry brush but don't use like a dry brush for this and we're just gonna kinda gently do the top and the corners and what that'll do is make those those uh, coils actually stand out for you and it doesn't take a whole lot of work now if you if you manually painted these it would probably look a little bit better but if you're trying to just get this on the table you know that's the way I do it uh, so that is how I paint my Kazarkins. Um, I don't know how I'm going to base these guys yet. I'm kind of leaning towards the uh, Into the Dark style with the with the painted bases. But I'm not really sure what I want to do yet, so we'll, we'll see what happens. But that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, hopefully you found it uh, useful. Uh, hopefully you'd paint your Kazarkins like this. Or not. I'm not your dad, so you paint them however you want. Uh, thanks for watching either way. And I'll see you at the next one. Later.